Hello there, welcome back to Armour 3 Mission Making in 15 minutes or less and today we're going to be talking about Simplex support services and uh, the reason we're doing this as a separate tutorial from systems uh, is essentially the, the level of complexity and detail that we kind of need to go into uh, means that we're going to be pushing past that 15 minute window and so uh, I thought I'd do another tutorial uh, that is just dedicated to Simplex supports and the reason being is that this is a really useful tool that allows you to add a lot of um, capability into your missions uh, way above what you can achieve with the um, or that which you can achieve with the uh, with the AI um, but doesn't require you to add additional players in game so what does it look like uh, well if you go into systems and into modules down to simplex open it up and you can see on the right hand side here we've got everything you know artillery uh, close air support drone gunship helicopter and plane you can do airdrop uh, for log you can add a, add a logistic station, so like a, a place where you can go and get some log stuff uh, and transport, which works for both vehicle and aviation. Jumping into the map, jumping into the map where the stuff actually is. Take three. OK, so that's here on the uh, on the 2D editor. If we get into the 3D editor, you can see we've got some stuff that's laid out. Some of it's synced, some of it's not. Uh, but let's talk about how you actually do it. So grab uh, an artillery piece in this example here. We've got the Sierra. Go to then systems. Add artillery, drop it down, right click, connect, sync to, and that is now synced to the artillery piece. But there's some customization that we, we need to go through as well. So if we double click on the artillery module, you can give it a call sign and uh, whatever you want. We're just going to call it rocket because I assume they're rockets. Uh, a respawn time, so essentially how long it will take for um, the vehicle to respawn if it gets blown up. Uh, and indeed, if you put it onto minus one, that now becomes a limited asset cooldown so the minimum time between requests if you have an artillery request they've then got a rearm uh, a restock and rearm so in this instance here it's going to be 90 seconds plus an additional eight seconds for every round that they fire um, you can have a maximum number of rounds that you can request and, and set theirs at 10 and you can have what's called the maximum coordination distance and what that means is if i take another one of these press control on c and v and right click connect and sync to here now when i call in for fires from um the uh show left they're going to fire both weapon systems will take on that responsibility so if i call for 10 this guy fires five this guy fires five uh, and then um the uh reduces the amount of um cooldown time that you're facing uh that's where that maximum coordination distance comes in of 100 meters you can change it to whatever you want um custom initiation code i didn't do anything stuff with that but you know it's there and this stuff again i didn't do any stuff with that but it is there that's artillery and we'll, we'll see that one in game and you can see where we've synced it uh, the other option so for close air support you can have a helicopter let's get a helicopter down close air support so blue four is a helicopter helicopters oh a little bird because they're cool let's drop you down in there my friend um, top tips when putting something down for um, simplex and it's close air support put down something that's got weapon systems that can fire otherwise it's pretty useless as close air support let's go for cas helicopter right click connect sync to and uh, sync to the object and there we go we now have a cas helicopter the other way that you can do it is just by placing down the module and designating the class name how do we get the class name i hear you cry uh, let's go for NATO planes and an A-10 because they're cool. Uh, you go into um, find your object, right click on the object, go to log, log classes to clipboard. And then we go into uh, here, press control and V and you've added in the, uh, the CAS, the CAS plane type that you want. And so that's where you get that from. Um, so here got CAS plane and then the weapon set make sure you've got a weapon set that actually works with the plane itself if you don't know where the weapon set is it's in the config viewer or indeed um, you can go into the mission there's the only ways that I know of finding it uh, if you go into your pylon settings uh, I'm afraid it's not going to give you the information that you want but you can mess around in there sad types 
the same detail there's cool down on this one it's in seconds we've gone for 300 five minutes um you can give it a call sign so you know what you're calling in um and there is a side that you can have uh so if it's blue four op four or independent obviously if you're blue four you want to make sure that it's blue four same detail here we've done the same with the drone we've just got the uav in uh and with the cas gunship we've got a cas gunship style in there um differences on that one you're going to add in how long is it going to loiter for that gives you how long can you be able to jump into the gunship to do stuff for um, but those are ways of calling in close air support uh, from different entities that will do different things and we'll, we'll see them in game shortly versus something where it's already in the game what else have we got under simplex uh, so we talked a bit about close air support you've got a list logistics airdrop and a logistics station um, so here's the logistics station module you've got to put in there what kit you want in there um, I don't ever use that, but it is there for you to do. It is the same here under the list function for the um, for the airdrop, and you can see I've put quite a lengthy tooltip in there because it's a bit of a, as I say, a bit of a lookout. But let's jump into one here. So class name, as before, what helicopter you're going to have to do it. Give it a call sign. Um, in this case, you're going to give it a flying height. It's AGL, not AMSL. So this will they'll fly at 50 meters above ground level. Not too bad at maintaining that altitude either. Uh, the list function. So how it kind of works. The tooltip didn't help me. Um, grab your the class name of your box. Again, same detail. Put the box down. Right click. Go into log classes clipboard and, and pop it in there. Let's just do it. Eh? So uh, I want the Ace miscellaneous items, for example. Drop it down in there. Right click onto it. Log log classes to clipboard go into your airdrop, go into your list function here and press control and V and you've now added that box. Okay, so that's how you get that. The first type you put down list function and add in. So square brackets, um, quotes, put in the box, uh, quotes, and then do a um, comma and you can close bracket or even need comma, sorry, you can close bracket there and you don't need anything else. If you want more than one type available, then the box goes in, in your quotes, comma, and then another open bracket, square bracket, add in the uh, the box type that you want, and then you put a close bracket around that one, and then you put a close bracket around the other one. However, if you want three, then for some bizarre reason, it's the square bracket in there, square bracket closed, comma, and so on and so forth, until the very end, making sure you've got two in there. Which is why it's weird. I don't know. I'm not a programmer. It doesn't make any sense to me. And the tooltip didn't seem to help me either. Um, but there we are. You guys might get it because you're probably cleverer than I am. All I know is that that's how I do it. Uh, and again, it's in the tooltip for how I did it. In the mission making, um, what else do you need to put in there? Um, I like messing around with the landing signal. Uh, you can ask for more than one box. You can't ask for more than one box type. So each airdrop type will give you um the british armed forces section supplies box i can ask for like 10 of them um, but i can't ask for one section supply box and one medical box for example and then you can give it different colors so this one's yellow cool down so as before you've got a cool down timer on there this one's down set for five minutes and making sure you get the side correct obviously you won't be able to call it in if you put it down as op four and then you're a blue four you won't be able to call it in so make sure you put it down as blue four if we're playing as blue four and then that's just been replicated four times so i can do I'm going to show you i can do four different types of uh, airdrops and they all flying together so it looks pretty uh what else have we got before we go and do some testing uh transport so the last one is transport and whoopsie doopsie you can let's go into transport uh again allocate them a call sign a respawn time if you want them to have infinite again if you only want a limited asset then just put it down to minus one and that will disable any respawn um, the reason I don't put it down to minus one is that these guys just have a habit of blowing themselves up for no particular reason, uh, which is kind of fine if you're just messing around. But if you're doing like a 40 player mission, um, I would just like to retain that capability in case armor is armor and does its thing. Uh, let's look on the helicopter one. Uh, same detail in terms of the information that goes in there because it's the same module type. But you'll see when we get in game. There are different options for me calling in a helicopter versus me calling in a, a land vehicle, for example. Uh, okay, and that is it in terms of the editing aspect of it, where to put stuff in. Let's see what this looks like in game.
Okay, so this is us now in game, and you can see here's where we've got those assets which have got um, uh, support services um, actually against a, a specific object in game. You can see the objects are there. Let's blow one of those up so we can look at the respawn system. Uh, there's a JDAM. Let's drop it over here. I'm going to blow up these uh, this kit and equipment. Uh, so you can see, let's get rid of those. That's going to now, you can see, they're going to come in a minute's time. So that's kind of the respawn thing. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that shortly. Uh, what else we've got? I have pre-called in an airdrop. So you can see this one's not a one of our assets. Spawns from somewhere outside the environment. Flies in and is going to drop in a uh, an airdrop any second now. That's why I've pre-called it in because it takes forever. Uh, let's look at this location here. So 063075. I'm coming in. There we go. And it's now dropping. We've got this indication here. Supplies are being dropped. And off they go. Uh, where were we? Map. Whenever you're calling in Simplex, I'd thoroughly recommend doing it from the map itself, uh, purely because the you have to give a grid reference for it. And if you get it wrong, you forget it. Uh, it can be a little bit embarrassing. Uh, where were we? 063075. So if I go Windows, uh, Self Interact, sorry, A Self Interact using Control and Windows, Support Services, and I'm going to do CAS. I'm going to use my little bird, and he's going to do Search and Destroy. And I give him the grid 064. Uh, 075 he's going to fly over here and start searching and, and destroying and killing the enemy right uh here's my helicopter dude you can see helicopters taking off certainly thinking about it and we'll close with and kill the enemy um, but the enemy will obviously shoot back at the helicopter so if i was for example doing a pickup from a similar location uh, let's do go into the map and do Support services, transport, let's get rescue one, come and pick up from 065076. See the indicator where it's going to fly to there. The helicopter's going to fly over there and then get shot at by the enemy. Uh, but whilst we're waiting for the helicopter to fly over there and get shot at by the enemy, let's have another look at the artillery aspect. Um, who can we blow up? These guys are here. Winner. We're going to blow these guys up. Uh, what's that? 056070. So if I go back into map, snuggle over to here. Uh, it was over here somewhere. Uh, support services, artillery, and show left. Let's do 056070. Let's try again. 056070. Uh, 10 rounds, uh, one dispersion, and no coordination. So you can see we've got a mark here. Gives you an ETA of the round. It's going to be 45 seconds until it gets in there. If I now go, go into self-interact and support services, if you look at CAS, you can see it's green over my little bird because it's on task. Transport, green over rescue one, on task. Artillery, yellow. It means that I can't call it for a task. It is committed to that task now, and I can't call or do anything to change that. It's not going to happen. Which is always fun when you give the wrong grid like you give your grid reference instead of the uh, artillery grid reference. Now we can see now our CAS helicopters flying around and doing stuff and things. And uh, here's our transport helicopter coming into the AO and is probably about to have a bad day when these guys start shooting at it. Oh, there's our indication from Sholef. So five seconds-ish before rounds impact, you get a notification saying that it's going to uh, blow some stuff up. Here we go, now we've got some rounds coming in. A little bit of dispersion, so it's around about 100 meters dispersion of those um, very large 155 rounds and starts blowing up the uh, the town there. Uh, so you can see they're calling in artillery. Um, there's another one over there. Uh, here's our transport helicopter. They're still shooting at it. You can see the tracer rounds going off at it there. Um, guys, I'll stop it there. That is uh, Simplex support in um, 15 minutes or less. Any questions, please leave them for me in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks very much. Take care and stay safe.